The much-anticipated meeting of the membership of the La Immaculata Credit Union took place on Saturday. The board of directors was forced to call the special general meeting after over 1,000 members signed a petition demanding answers. Reporter Arturo Cantun was there and filed this report. Saturday's meeting was highly anticipated and attended by over 1,100 member owners of the institution. As the meeting got underway, the group of members that had petitioned for the special general meeting objected when a member of the board started to read the same statement read and already broadcast on the media on Wednesday night by President Ena Martinez. After a general consensus, this was allowed. While the media was allowed into the premises where the meeting was held, we were not allowed to record audio or video. From the podium, members of the board, Anna McLaughlin, read a statement and providing a few more details that the ongoing investigation has revealed. There was no change of position by the board. The 13-member body maintains that former GM Yolanda Gomez is responsible for a list of wrongdoing, among them several that can be considered to be criminal offenses. At the end of the statement, the president of the board, Ena Martinez, declared that while the session was not to make any financial report, she can say that for the past fiscal year, the credit union saw a net profit of 3.34 million Belize dollars, or 15% gain compared to last year. Immediately after, the floor was open for questions or concerns from members. But we must note that the session was highly controlled by the moderator and got to the extent where the open microphone was turned off at least one time when a member started addressing the gathering. As more members raise concerns that question the doings of Gomez and the Board of Directors, along with its overseeing committees, longtime member Belis Carballo Sr. pointed out that it was best for the matter to be left to the courts of law to review the evidence when the investigation is completed. It was at this point that former GM Yolanda Gomez stood in an attempt to address the board, and Carballo called for the meeting to be adjourned. Thus, the moderator immediately suspended the special general meeting, not allowing Gomez and a number of other members to ask more questions or share their concerns. Members started to leave the meeting and the board left the head table. We managed to speak with the president, Ena Martinez, as she left. We have already said what we have had to say, and that's all we can say. There were strong allegations against a, a woman that has been there for so many years. Do you have any proof to show the members? Of course we will. Very soon we will do so. But how long are we talking? I mean, the members have been waiting for months. Listen to me. It does not... It is not up to us, it is up to the special investigator who has not finalized nor has the central bank. We have said what we can say and that's final for the moment. Ms. Erna, why was the meeting suspended when we had many other people ready in line for some questions? Well, absolutely, we heard that there was an adjournment and anybody can have, could have adjourned a meeting. And that was done and it, we have to respect that, Ms. Kami. Okay, one of the board members mentioned that the audit goes back to 2012. Um, are you as board members challenging the audit that um, the Castillos and Sons did at those times? Well, absolutely, and to a certain extent, because, I mean, what can happen? This is a special investigation that has been done primarily on certain issues. No, we're, we understand that this, um, this, this, this dates back to 2012. Where was the board all the time in supervising the work of the administration? Um, administration? We have already answered that question. That was not recorded. We have already... Nobody was recording. Nobody was recording. For the sake of the media and the members who are not here, answer that question. We asked a scope for 2012 to 2015, and that's why we stuck to that. It could easily be that there's more in, in the areas of back that we don't even know because we are not in there. How often do you guys carry out a work or check the accounting and everything of the institution? Well, we receive our financials and we review them. How often? 
Well, that's every year. So you did not notice that last year or the year before? How can we go into details, my friend? How can we go into details? Know, the one who's there. I mean, I but the financial statements say what is there. And what did you, from when did you notice this? How long did you notice this? So something was wrong, was happening at the Immaculata Creek? We cannot comment to that, my friend. We said, said it. We said 2012. Yes, we said 2012. That was the scope. That was the scope from 2012 to 2015. That was what we asked for the investigation to be done. As simple as that. We could have gone and do further. But we just decided to limit it to 2012, 2015. Is the board taking any responsibility? Of course not. We don't work at the credit union. But you supervise? Yes, we do. But we cannot go. We had a lot of trust and confidence in Mrs. Gomez. And being that she receives a very handsome salary, we believe that it is her duty to ensure that she does her work because we don't work there. We don't micromanage. All right. Mom, I, I, can we expect that other persons will also be terminated? We end our interview. We have answer our question. Oh, we have finished. We have answered. Anybody else is going to be fired? We have answered. And with that, the board of directors left, and the members now await for the conclusion of the special financial investigation that is underway. Reporting for Love News from Orange Walk, I'm Arturo Cantun. Dave Esparas has been one of the members at the forefront of the movement and calls Saturday's meeting invalid. Hard work to get to this meeting. We picketed, we wrote letters, we were in the media, we challenged them to come to speak to the media. They didn't come. And, and today's meeting, you didn't need to come here. It was all, it was all in, the, in, the, in the media. And they went against one of the... Uh, credit unions bylaws. I think it is uh, Article 7, 8, where all confidential things should be kept by, by, the, by the manager, the um, employees and the board should be kept only to the members, but they went publicly. So they, 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 they went back that, that side. Secondly, at the end of this meeting, you saw the meeting ended well because they didn't went through the correct procedures. This meeting is not valid, right? Because they should have given Ms. Jolie the opportunity to face the people she has as her children in the growth of the Immaculata Credit Union. We didn't put it in agenda, but she was going to speak as a member okay. owner, not as, as, the, as the past general manager. So that's why we didn't put in hindsight, in hindsight, we should have done a lot of things with that request. But we're only basing on, on four of them. And lastly, if you can see, it is <coughs> Ms. Yola's termination, explanation of that. But the whole meeting from beginning to end was just tarnishing her name from beginning to end. Right? Why the general meeting couldn't have done because this fraud or that thing. So from beginning to end, it was just against Ms. Yola. And they were very, very biased not to give Ms. Yolanda the opportunity to speak as a member owner of the credit union. The horror call and meeting to an end and it didn't went through the correct procedures. According to Espadas, he views the actions of the board as highly irresponsible and putting the membership's investments at risk if Gomez decides to sue. They, they have big attorneys, big attorneys, big pain attorneys with my money from the credit union. Big heavy attorneys. I have none. I have none of my own knowledge and my courage to fight for justice. I am asking again, any lawyer wants to be pro bono, please come help me out because this is serious. Right? But as rightfully as Mr. said, the courts will decide because this will end up in court no matter what. And we, the members, owners of the credit union, <clears throat> will lose at the end of the day. Financially, we will lose. No matter what Ms. Ena said, how much millions it did in, in, in four months, we will lose because we will pay high-quality attorneys that they have <clears throat> to fight this case. And if, and if Ms. Yoli wins, then they have to compensate that lady out of our money again. So we will constantly be losing. Esparas said that he intends to write to the credit union registrar in order to get a satisfactory report about what is happening at the institution. As we reported earlier, the former general manager Yolanda Gomez was not allowed to address the gathering. Following the meeting, Gomez spoke with the press. She was asked to comment on the allegations made against her. 
Monsieur, they have brought out, what they have brought out against you right now is only allegations. They have presented no evidence. But how do you respond to those allegations which are very serious? Definitely, I deny all of them. And um, the, the president actually claimed that the one in reference to the visa card that those are paid from the credit union coffers, that's a blatant lie. And they know, they know. Their senior staff members in there, the, the acting general manager knows that's a lie. So I have to deny all of their allegations. And as, as Mr. Carbayo rightfully said in the end, let the court come out with the facts. That is when things will come to light. Ms. Yole, as the past general manager for 24 years of the credit union, you are well aware of the do's and don'ts of the credit union. Um, if the board is coming out launching these accusations or allegations against you, as a former general manager, would you say that they are as guilty as anybody else who is being accused or allegedly accused in, 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 these, uh, in this investigation? I think a lot of members voiced that opinion today. And um, as I said again, let the court, let the court prove, let, let the final decision be proved in court. Um, you're making some serious allegations, you're talking about fraud, you're talking about forgery. They definitely don't have that against me. Um, I think you heard them choose their words carefully as well, directly and indirectly. Okay, and they know why they're choosing that because while they're trying to paint me in the worst manner possible and they're trying to put me as the person overall responsible, they know, they know that for a fact. They know that for a fact that when they're talking about fraud and forgery, that's definitely not at my end. They launched a question uh, uh, for someone from the surveillance committee saying why they had not come out before. We're talking about an audit going way back to 2012, 2013, 2014. Um, they're saying, the surveillance committee is saying that they received false reports, hence why they couldn't say anything at the time because they knew nothing. Could you respond to that? They, as I said again, let them bring out the facts. Let them bring out the facts. There, there is definitely an explanation to the procedures and the processes that have to be abided by. I'm not the sole person within a process. A process takes more than one person. The procedures is more than one person. And at the end of the day, all the loan applications have to be signed by the credit, by, by the credit committee that makes it legal as well. Right? So procedures are in place, and they, when did they come for, for this to be done in, in the right place, as Mr. Carbayo rightfully said, so the, the truth will all come to light and you all will be there to, to, to witness that. Present at the special general meeting were two representatives of the Central Bank of Belize and the Registrar for Credit Unions in Belize.